Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Friday, September 4th, 2015. Welcome to Super Organizer Universe Radio Show. I am James Law Jr., the Super Organizer. Yes, the Super Organizer. And I'm so glad you guys are here joining me this morning. I have two guests today with me, actually in studio. Crazy. Usually it's on the phone, as you guys know, but I have people in the studio today. One is a woman who has been here before, friends of the show, a friend to me. And she is an actress, host, and a perfect example of how women should behave themselves, Aww. Lady Dean Harvey. Hey, guys. Good morning. How are you? And this gentleman I'm very excited to have here with me today because he is someone from my hometown of Inglewood. That's right. Inglewood, California. He is also a young man on the rise. He is a real estate writer and realtor. I was reading about that. I want to actually talk to you about that. And he is someone who is working his way up in the world, Jerry Morales. Hey, nice to meet you, Inglewood. Inglewood, that's right. (laughs) I love it. In the house. I love it, kids. And so, of course, as I always begin, before I even begin, begin, I have to say good morning to the man who makes it all happen for me behind the the two-way mirror. It's not even a mirror. Just, I guess, the window. (laughs) And I actually just knocked the thing in there. Brian. Good morning. Good morning. I was trying to get my chair over there. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. That chair's kind of weird. That other chair is kind of weird looking. Weird. I like it doesn't have handles. Yeah, it's like, I don't know if I can fit, I don't know if I can fit in that. Anyway, so he's here today, too. So we're all here today, and we're ready to get started. We have an hour of some fun stuff. We're going to learn about um, our guests and have some tips and talk about what's going on in the world of organization and time management. Ooh. So uh, before I begin... Uh, talking to them, I always do my thing of thanks and gratitude. Many of you guys know that know when you watch, listen to my show that I talk about giving thanks and giving thanks out loud to people and places and things, and also living in gratitude. I live in gratitude every single day that I have the things that I have and I get to do the things that I like to do. And I think it's very important. So I'm going to start out with. Oh, also we have a little cute little baby in the audience today, and she's so cute. She's got her name is Cosette. So if you hear any extra kind of cooing or anything, it's, just, it's her. That's her. You know, it's life, kids. This is real life. And many of you guys are housewives and homemakers. You know how it is, right? Okay. So I first want to give thanks and gratitude to my engineer, Brian Leone. I do. He was alive and well. He went through an unfortunate thing earlier this week, and I'm Aww. so glad he's still around. And uh, he's a great engineer, and we're developing a very nice friendship. So it's a friendship where you kind of we get to learn things from each other. So that's very cool. And I'm glad you're still around. You're welcome. I'm, I'm happy say, to be alive, too. Sorry I'm, not, to I'm, I'm, you. I'm glad you're alive. Thank God. Oh, my God. I'm so happy. Um, this week earlier, I lost yet another longtime friend, and his name was Mathis. And I've known him for about 15 years. This is the third person in, like, three months I've lost. Um, it's, yeah. And uh, he's a nice guy. He was a nice guy, very creative guy. He fought the good fight. He tried. This is my third major death this summer, and I just it doesn't get easier at all. And it just teaches me every day to live in thanks and gratitude. Right. It really does. And to, and to make sure that I say it. Mm-hmm. So I just want to say math is high, and hope I'll see you sometime. And the last person I want to give thanks and gratitude is, because we've been talking about business stuff today, part of our conversation, is a guy who gave me a job that changed my life. His name is Rex Higa. And he hired me on the spot at this place called um, Headlines. And Headlines is no longer a business anymore. It's in San Francisco. And it was a, like a retail store. And he hired me 21 years ago. Actually, 21 years ago, I think, like last month. Kind of weird. I was a young boy. I was like 24. It's crazy. And he was the first person to help me see that I can go beyond folding jeans and supervising people. He exposed me to a whole other world that I just couldn't believe. It gave me it was a world of possibility. And what he did was he gave me a job in the corporate office. And I was this young type black man who didn't really know too much about corporate life. And with him giving me a job as an IT assistant and then later as a supervisor, I learned the ways of like upper management. It broadened my scope on what I could do in my professional life. And it changed the course of my life. And I, I just always be grateful to him. Now, I did get other corporate jobs after this. And I did eventually find I didn't like corporate life. <laughs> so I got out of it on my own business. But it did open my eyes to a broader possibility of what I could be. Besides a person folding jeans and serving people. So I live in gratitude for that. And Rex, I know you're out there somewhere in San Francisco. Thank you very much. 
Oh. So it's my thanks and gratitude. So I'm going to ask uh, Jared. Do anybody want to give me some thanks oh, and gratitude too? I have an endless list. Please give uh, it. First and foremost, obviously <laughs> my my father, yes. single parent, raising me in oh, Inglewood, wow. California. Hard worker, taught me a uh, you know good habits growing up, and yeah. my brother as well. He's a very very smart man. Uh, always uh, kind of taught me and, and you know strung me along all, all throughout life. So wow. He was always a big influence on me and who I am as a person, how I developed. I have such a big family. I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and give a shout out yeah, to, to yeah. my, my abuelita with all those Woo! the bomb enchiladas. Abuelita, oh, yeah, that's man. right. You can't mess with abuelitas enchiladas, man. The wholesome loving, the wholesome cooking, all, all my family, all my cousins, they all know it. Yeah. My friends and, and family, they, they just support me. And it just it's just so such a positive thing to have so many people, you know, rally for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I give a shout out to my office, KW, Marina, Very good. Uh, my team leader, Benji, uh, my mentor, Veronica Jones. Those people have a big influence on me, so yeah. them as well, and and just and you, James, actually oh. for inviting me over and giving a a fellow Inglewood City That's of Champion right. resident, you know, <laughs> a chance to come on this radio show, and Thank you. I'm I'm That's digging the Darth Vader T-shirt. That's that's, that's right. really cool, and that's right. um, yeah, so I just appreciate every day, and then that comes along, and same with you, you know, I've I've lost a lot of people the past two two and a half years, okay. you know, I've had about like seven seven deaths in my immediate wow. sphere of influence so that's that's big that is big you know and it makes you really appreciate you know life as you go yes. on and you know you say I'm, I'm i'm pursuing all these endeavors and it's because yep. you know i look around and i really do appreciate every day that i am able to get up and, and walk and, and pursue my endeavors mm-hmm. to try right mm-hmm. because tomorrow's never promised sure isn't i mean you hear it all the time but it's, it's the truth you just you prove my point i say this all the time on my show that it takes a village to raise me it still does. It still does. I'm mean, like, almost right. 50. It still does. Yeah. So you're just, for example, that also. It takes a village. We have our mm-hmm. people, our circle. It's great. Everybody. So shout out to all you guys for helping Jerry yeah. out. Shout out to everybody. Yeah. That's right. And Ladine, this time, who do you like to get well, some? Well, unfortunately, I don't have a long list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you have some people. But I do, I do. First and foremost, my mother. Oh, yes, mommy. Of course. Hi, mommy. Um, Her beautiful mother. I thank my mom for, you know, raising me the way mm-hmm. I should be raised as a single mother. And my small circle of friends, and also my supportive boyfriend, Ramajara. Yes, <laughs> shout out to him. That's hey. right. I think you know it's really interesting because uh, we're talking that you guys come from single parent homes, and you turn out okay. Yeah, yeah. People like to get over that. You can, you can be, you can turn out okay. Not so much because of the whoopings, but <laughs> <laughs> because of watching. I'm sure that helps a little bit. <laughs> well, that a little bit. But because of like watching your mm-hmm. mom, mm-hmm. you know. And for you, your dad. Struggle or your dad uh, to make sure that the household is in order mm-hmm. all day, every day, whether yeah. they have to work 24 hours a day. They do what they have to do for their right. children. So, Yay, mommy. Now, I want to ask you, because I asked this before. So, in terms of, because this, this is an organization show, how was your, because it's all guys, obviously, right? Well, for a while, we lived with my grandmother and grandfather. Okay. Right, my, my dad's parents. Okay. But, oh, I mean, for a while, it's been just the three of us. Wow. I mean, my like, they call my dad the Mr. Mom. <laughs> I mean, we, we, have, we have stories where, you know, my aunts are all hanging out, flipping through magazines yeah. at camp, and he's over here brushing the tent. <laughs> And they're like, shouldn't we be doing that? He's more of a he's a better better mother than us, you yes. know. So my dad's <laughs> yes. really like he's organized. Oh yes. I mean yeah, he's an yeah, organized yeah. guy. Yeah, you know? okay, yeah. So yeah, he's just I like that. He has that structure. I, I had a, I had a rant a, a couple months ago on my show about I had, had someone told me that um, this guy was telling me a story about how his girlfriend kept saying, "Well, you're like you're like a chick because you you're clean." Whoa. And it's like that's like such a bad. There's no gender to being yeah. organized. You just, or being, or being, or I mean, clean and neat. It's just, it's just a thing. You just right. people. So that's like so you prove that. I like that. that men are taking care of things too. I wish my boyfriend was clean. <laughs> <laughs> you said that last time. You said that last time. <laughs> oh, so there's man. those no gender. It's like there are messy women also. Trust me, I live with some. Oh women. yes. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I mean, in college, you know, you go to oh, a yeah. girl's room and it's like, whoa, yes. <laughs> piles of clothes. You know, that's very true. Actually, I know a lot more guys who actually are more organized than girls are. It's really funny, uh, but not in, not in your life. But in <laughs> my life, I do know them. Yes. Uh, so, also, I want to bring up as we're talking, Jerry's doing something really cool for the city of Inglewood, and I'm actually um, giving him some stuff, and this is a good thing for organizers and people who have a lot of stuff. Can you talk about what you are doing? And uh, So basically, I'm teaming with the nonprofit Dare to Care for the Homeless, and we've actually been in communication, and we're, we're forming a relationship with two organizations, uh, Dare You to Care, okay. which is an outreach program for uh, rehabilitation. 
um, as well as the homeless shelter. I forget what it's called specifically. Uh, Hopix okay. is the acronym. Um, it's on Broadway next to Slauson. Around when, when I look at, I'll look it up and I'll put it on my yeah. site and you guys yeah. can see it if you want to So basically what we're doing is collecting uh, clothes, shoes, food, hygiene products, things of that nature. And we're donating to these both of these organizations and helping those in need. Good. You know, and I went down there uh, a couple of days ago, Wednesday, yeah, to go to both uh, shelters. And, you know, these people, they come in there with, with nothing. Literally, mm-hmm. some of them come from straight from prison or just straight from the streets. Mm-hmm. And they literally have nothing. All they have yeah. is what they're wearing. And right. to have an extra pair of shoes, you know, another change of clothes, even hygiene products. Mm-hmm. You have four or five people living in one room, you know, yeah. just rehabilitating, you know, cleaning up their life. Right. And so I appreciate you and your donation. And you I'm going to set up some uh, boxes around a few businesses I've already yeah. in communication with Good. in Inglewood. So a lot of people, you saw my yes. face, Facebook post, yeah. a lot of people have a lot of clothes. They're re- ready yes. to donate. And mm-hmm. myself as well. Cleaned out <laughs> yeah. my closet, organized. Good. Oh, good. I mean, you know, I got a bunch of stuff that I'm good. ready to donate and give. Right, because I was just telling my boyfriend actually the other day is that I wish I could find somewhere else to give my clothes instead of taking it to Goodwill or right. something, you know. Right. And yeah. I think this is like the perfect Shelters. Um, right, that's what centers, I mean. yeah. yeah. Halfway houses are all those great things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's a great thing you're doing. Yeah. I really appreciate that. I think... Um, for me, it gives me faith in young people again. <laughs> yeah, well, this is something, you know, in the back of my head, I've always wanted to, to give back to my community. You know, just growing up in Inglewood in general, I love breaking stereotypes. And yes. I, I love to be that guy that says, wow, he did that. You know, he, he's he's from Inglewood, but he's giving back. He's done this. He's done that. He's a realtor. He's a writer. You know, he's been in Huffington Post. business. Right. You know, right. I just love breaking stereotypes because people sometimes, their perception of oh, a yeah. town is just, oh yeah, you know, not the best. So. No, yeah. I, I understand. I yeah. live it, so I understand. Um, I think it's a great idea, and, and for me and for everybody out there who listens and who are either organizers, I'm sure you agree with me, um, this is a great idea if you need to edit your closets. There you go. Edit, edit. your – we use the word edit. It's <laughs> my new word. Edit the garages. Edit, you know, edit places that have a lot of stuff in them. Um, you bring up a good point that there are people out there – You just think about this way. You have – Shirts, shoes, appliances, things that you mm-hmm. you are not using. They're just taking up space. They're sitting and getting dusty. Meanwhile, there are folks out there who are trying to start their lives over and don't have any of that stuff. So think about how good you'll feel if you could give that stuff to someone who's actually going to use it. Exactly. I, just, I recommend that for everybody. And that's, and, that's, and that's a good incentive to get organized also. If you're thinking, how can I get, why should I get organized? It's better for your life, number one. But also... Yeah, some stuff to people who actually can use it. Right. Old clothes, anything. Like you said, toiletries. Like I'm giving two bags stuff. I'm giving stuff like um, shaving cream and you know, and soap and shampoo, stuff like that that really can be used. Yeah. Practical stuff. Yeah, practical stuff yeah. that we take for granted actually. Exactly. Q tips. We don't I mean <laughs> we, like, we really we take, take it for granted. <laughs> we do we take it. Is that crazy? It's like we take it and it's like these and some of these people have absolutely nothing. Exactly. They need a chance. And I think it's a great idea to doing that. So on my sites, I will post um, the places that you're giving to. And we'll have it. So if you want to know more, you can do that also. But I just want to make sure I mention that on air. Thanks. Appreciate it. So that's a great thing. So, Ladine, last time we uh, spoke. Yeah. You have a baby. Just kidding. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, just kidding, folks. So she's, uh, she's, no, no. She's like, what are you doing these days? Well, I am a nanny, of course, yes. as you can yes. see. Yes. Um, and then other than the After Buzz TV General yes. Hospital that's we, coming up. Yes, I nice. should say it to everybody. For those of you who follow me, you know this already, or you don't know. Um, after Buzz TV is green light a show that I brought to them for General Hospital. It's an after show. Yes. It'll follow the Days of Our Lives after show that I'm on already. And Ladina is one of the co-hosts with me, and we're yes. going to bring that to you within the next month or so. Right. They're working on the dates right now. And I, it's like still, I can't really say what, but I did book a commercial. Oh, good. Nice. Congratulations. Well, I'm still yes. like in the process okay. of, you know, going through the process. Yes, going through the process. Well, it's, so, it's a process. Yeah, it's, the most I can really say. Yeah, about no, that's that, good, but that's so. good. That's something positive going right. on. So that's basically where I'm at right now. Just yeah. Nannying and trying to still get my career going. Yeah. How do you stay motivated? How do I stay motivated? What keeps you motivated? Writing. Oh, good. I write a lot um, to try to keep my sanity. You know, okay. it gets stressful. Yeah. Um, 
So, and a lot, and my mom too. Okay. When I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed, I call mommy. Okay. Mommy always knows what to say to bring me back down to zero. When I feel like my life isn't going anywhere, I'm yeah. at a standstill here in California. Mama always knows what yeah. to say. So right now, that's pretty much writing and my mom. Yeah. Wow. Because you're from Miami, right? Yes, I am. Oh, I miss uh, Miami. Yay. Oh, I love me some Miami. I'll be love going it. back Christmas time, and I'm really excited. I hope to be there in... Oh, we're going to be in Florida in January for my niece's wedding. I hope to go down in to January? South Beach. Yeah. Her wedding's the 9th. I'll be there. Are you serious? I will be there. Oh, my God. We have to I meet will... up. <laughs> we'll talk off camera. Off, off camera. We'll talk off, <laughs> off the radio. We'll talk. No, seriously. I'm, I'm going to go for that weekend for the wedding. I'm like, I'm going to stay down there for it. Really? Yeah, I'm yeah. going to be down there for it. All righty. Well, there you go. Well, Jane, we stay down to Miami. Just bring it in the the right way. I'm on. Miami's the bomb. I love Miami. Don't get me started. Um. So how do you, with uh, time management issues now, because now you're nannying and you want to write and auditions, how are you kind of working that out? I'm going to be honest. I don't have time management. Yeah. Every day it's like yeah. I'm going with the flow, yeah. basically. Um, when I try to organize my time, yeah. it's, I always say I need more. I need more hours in a day. Yeah. It's not enough, and yeah. I just don't know what to do. What to do? We're gonna, we're gonna get you there. We're gonna get you there. <laughs> we're gonna work out for. It. We're gonna get you there. But that's a very honest reaction for folks out there. Just that you know, time management affects everyone. It does. It really does. And in fact, we're gonna talk to Jerry about his time management too. But it affects everyone. And it's just, I mean, it can happen any time where you lose it. Right. Even myself sometimes. Because I'm, I'm really close to being a full time nanny. Okay. Like, very, very close. So it's mm-hmm. like my weekdays are gone. Okay. I only really have weekends to like myself or try to do things. So that's like the hard part about it. Like, aw. Crazy. And so now, Jerry, let's talk to Jerry a little bit. Um, so where are you? So you're from Inglewood. From Inglewood. And you, what college did you go to? Humboldt State University. Humboldt State. Okay, yep. way up Northern, north. Northern way California. up north. Oh, yeah. I have family who went to Chico State. So there you go. Like, right way, on. Way up. I know the whole area up there. Yeah. Um, and you graduated with a? English, a BA. Okay. In English creative writing. So do you like writing? Of course. Love it. Yeah, me too. I'm yeah. Big writer. I love writing. So then you, so what made you decide to go into the real estate field and not like writing field? Okay. So actually right after, during college, actually, I picked up a writing gig online, right? Okay. And so I did a lot of SEO work, search engine optimization, get mm-hmm. ar- articles to the top of Google search yes. engines, right? Yeah. Um, during that time, last year of college, when I graduated, I always knew I wanted a second profession. Just okay. In this economy, you know, realistic, practically writing it's jobs are, are not are not <laughs> yeah. going to stick forever, yeah. right? Yeah. I was fortunate enough to find a writing job yeah. online and elsewhere, but I always told myself, you know, I want a second profession. Okay. And I looked at a couple of different things. I looked at web design, looked at maybe okay. programming and real estate, okay. right? And I said, you know what? Real estate is really practical because people are always going to need a home, mm-hmm. right? People always need a place mm-hmm. to live. And I decided to just pursue that venture, and it worked out. So I did a lot of real estate writing as well. Oh, I have family in real estate, so okay, it just it felt okay. it felt like just the, the the right decision to make. So in college, go back to college, like, and I asked her the same question: Did you have good time management? How did you uh, uh, navigate that? now? not not really a whole <laughs> lot. I mean, I went to all my classes and everything, okay. and I, I I got my degree right. <laughs> but I mean, come on, I was in college. Yes, I was having was. fun. I wasn't thinking about oh, I'm gonna manage this time here, 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 and there. You know, I, 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 I just made sure I managed. I looked up how many classes I can miss in total and made sure oh, I made gosh. them all. <laughs> oh my god! I did the same thing sometimes. Oh, that's too. so funny. Yeah, I think I that's the it. college kid it mentality. Like, yeah, you yeah, have to live it up. I mean, yeah. I was what twelve hours away. You know, living in I had mm-hmm. my own house. Oh, you wow. know, we had a, a pool table, foosball table. <laughs> he was having fun. You know, we had he a, was yeah. On, he was on it. You know, it was really fun. We had a hot. What, the previous house for my last year, we had a hot tub. Oh my god! Yeah, we just we lived it up, man. We yes. lived it up. <laughs> so then, so then, where did the motivation come for you after? Was it because you left college, you got into the real world? Like, how did your shift happen for you? Well, I mean, I was always motivated. I mean, okay, so you know okay. what I'm saying. Uh, I definitely always managed enough time to to write online, even throughout college. Wow. Okay. You know, in between classes, I'd have my laptop. I'd work online. Okay. You know, I didn't have to, but I just said, you know what, this is going to give me practical experience. I could say I have eight months to a year. Okay. You know, when I graduate, of practical writing online experience, right? And after college, I wrote online for about a year until I landed a steady gig yeah. working in downtown LA. Okay. And during that time, I was also studying for my real estate license. Wow. So, I mean, the, mo- the motivation was always yeah. there. Um, it, 
you know, just as far as time, actual management, okay. I wouldn't say it was really there. But you kind of did. I mean, so wait, let's talk about that because you said you were studying for your real estate license, you were writing, and then obviously life stuff going on. How did you work that out for yourself? Just stay motivated. I don't know. I just in my, I guess in my brain, the way I work is work first, okay, play second. Because the That's harder good. I work, the harder I'm going to be able to play. Right? Yeah, you I'm know? the same so, way. Okay. Because it's just interesting because people, a lot of times, I talk about this on the show, it's motivation. That's the whole thing. It's like, yeah. how do I find motivation? How do I get motivation? And a great thing with writing online, um, you know, I can I can watch TV and write online. Yeah. And, and I can watch basketball or do it, watch something online. And, you know, I can work, you know, 20 minutes, you know, hard force, work, concentrate, and then yeah. kind of watch, you know, a quarter of the Lakers. Yeah. And then go back to working hard. And then, you know, go back and forth. So, yes, I'm working, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like I'm working. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, that, and the same with, with real estate. You know, I'll call clients for an hour straight, you know, take a little breather, five, ten minutes, and then go right back at it, you know? Yeah. And, and that's, I pace myself. Yeah. It's all about pacing yourself. You have to, and you have to kind of genuinely enjoy what you really do, honestly. Good, good, there you go. Because good I, I, I love talking to people. I love interacting. I love helping people, right? Mm-hmm. And, and in real estate, it's, it's a, a big, you know, life changing move people yeah. are going through. Mm-hmm. And I always tell people, I'm not perfect, but to the best of my ability, I'm going to help you mm-hmm. find the house, upgrade, do whatever it takes. Yeah. And people recognize that you work so hard. I just did not think you're young. You brought up two good points. One, you have to really kind of enjoy what you're doing. That's part of the motivation, isn't it? It is. That is part. That's right there. And two, you said something about. Um, oh my God! I'm blank all of a sudden. There you go. But that one is the big one. That's a big one. You gotta enjoy what you're doing. Maybe. I know I went as well. I saw I had a I had a late work night last night, so I'm still going up. I saw, yeah, yeah. I saw that too. Oh my, it was. was all, I said, "How is he going to get up this early?" There was stuff going on behind the scenes of the studio that just it was all out of our controls. And I was a professional, and I did three shows last you night. Didn't invite me to that show. I guess, I guess we all. I know. Were, uh, we all were up late, and we saw that he. Yeah, was yeah, yeah, saw, yeah, exactly. It, yeah. Well, you guys got up. I'm like, little. <laughs> So we're going to come back with Jerry Morales and with Lady Harvey and Miss Baby over there. And we're going to talk some more about time management and organization and what's going on in their lives. This is Super Organized Universe Radio. neighbor get some sod put in yeah it's marathon yeah that's what i got but yours looks so much greener and thicker than mine what's going on i'm gonna call the growers southland sod farms may i help you my marathon sod doesn't look as good as my neighbors are you sure yours is marathon that's what i asked for let me do a computer search Mm, we don't have a record of your delivery you didn't get genuine marathon sod what do you mean Sometimes unscrupulous contractors, retailers, and other sod farms lead you to think they're selling Marathon, but then substitute a lesser brand. That really teased me off. How could I have known I got a cheap imitation? Look for the bold, genuine Marathon label on the sod pallets when they're delivered. Don't get cheated. Look for the genuine Marathon sod logo displayed by nurseries and landscape contractors in the Yellow Pages. Or call 1-800-4-MARATHON for a free do-it-yourself video and authorized dealer list. That's 1-800, the number 4, then Marathon. Or visit the website at www.sod.com. Hi, I'm Edward James Olmos. I'm here to talk to you about RAD, recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving. Think about it. You have choices that you can make in your life, good choices and bad ones. Drinking and driving, bad choice. Why? The life you may take may even be your own. Think about it. Drinking and driving doesn't mix. Get a designated driver. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. So, I'm a dog, and I just got adapted by this new human guy, and I'm starting to wonder how he got along without me. I mean, okay, something as simple as walking around the block. He's got this leash thing, and he puts me on one end and him on the other, and I'm just taking him around. I I think he's afraid of getting lost. Without that leash and me guiding him along, I don't think he'd find his way back home. But it's kind of cute. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. Los Pollos. 
home of flavor down to the bone chicken. As we say in Spanish, el sabor hasta el último huesito. At Los Boils, we serve delicious Cuban slash Mexican marinated chicken. We are cooking our chickens in rotisserie ovens to give you a well-seasoned, well-marinated, well-cooked, delicious chicken. We have three locations to serve you. In the city of Bell, we are located in 6201 Atlantic Avenue on the corner of Randolph and Atlantic. In the city of East L.A., we are located on 5161 Pomona Boulevard on the corner of Atlantic and Pomona Boulevard. And in the city of Downey, we are located on 7940 East Florence Avenue in the corner of Paramount and Florence. Come to Los Boils and experience the most delicious chicken that you'll ever have the pleasure of eating. Okay, and we are back. We are back to Super Organizer Universe Radio. I am James Lott Jr. And we are talking to you, Jerry Morales and Lady hey. Harvey. How are you guys? Hey. There you go. Okay, so Jerry. Hey, before you, before you keep going. Yes. I'm going to interject with some production notes here. Are we Ooh. expecting a call? No, not no? today. Okay, so don't answer the calls coming in. <laughs> you're right, you're like, yeah. like, like, hello, you're on the air. <laughs> no, you know what's so funny, Brian? So on one of my shows for Big Brother, I do Big Brother After Show, we take calls. And on the air, I'm like, hi, welcome to Big Brother After Show. What is your name? Where are you calling from? They're like, hello? Hello? I go, yeah, you're on Big Brother After Show. What did I call? <laughs> like, you're on the air. He's like, this isn't the phone company? <laughs> I'll have no. to help you today. I, 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 almost, I almost said I go, no. And they're like, I called the wrong number. I'm like, do you watch Big Brother or I'll click? No. I had a wrong number on, live It'd on the air. It'd be funny if it was, actually, I do. Yeah, I was like, I do. I, I do, do. Yeah. I do for a phone company, but that's my other job. Yeah, so it's kind of funny. So that. Okay, so no so don't, don't answer the calls if they're looking. Okay, for I'm you. like, well. So okay, so what is one thing that has surprised you, good or not so good, about your profession? Hmm. You be either one. Good, you, not just so one good. or the other. That's a tough one. I don't think anything's really truly surprised me. Um, I mean, you know, just writing about real estate, having family in real estate, mm-hmm. hearing a lot of stories. This is all stuff that's been expected. Yeah. One thing I, I will say is. The more I do develop in my profession, you know, you know, people like Tony Robbins or oh, yeah. people like that. When I was younger, like in I guess what, high school, college, okay. I used to think that was a lot, total BS. <laughs> I'll be honest. I used to say, "Oh, those people that go to the seminars, yeah, motivational speakers, yeah, I was like Screw motivational that. speakers yeah. are just, you know, who cares? Yeah. Like, why do you need that? <laughs> yeah. You know." But I guess the one thing that surprised me is the more I develop as a person mm. in my career, I mean, as an individual. But this is recent, you know. Mm. I'm really realizing how much what those types of people say, what how much it really resonates with who I want to be as a person and how yeah. I want to develop. Yeah. And if you really truly listen to what they're saying, mm-hmm. it's actually really constructive. Yeah. You know, so I will say that a lot of the motivational speakers, having people guide you, uh, you know, for somebody like me who used to think that that was total BS, it's mm-hmm. it's really interesting. To come with it with a different perspective and and to really see I have a long term plan in you know in mind. Yeah. So I guess that as far as the door knocking and all the cold calling yeah. oh, and every, cold calling. all the open oh. houses I've done, that's all expected. I, yeah. I knew that was going to yeah. happen. You know, I, I know, I know it takes a long time to establish uh, consistency mm-hmm. in real estate, mm-hmm. but I've had consistency. So it's just I know it's it's going to take a lot more hard work. And you're at Keller Williams Marina Del Rey. Marina Del Rey. Okay. Yeah. So folks need a house. Go to him. There you go. Um, so Keller Williams. Okay. And Keller Williams is a, a large firm. Yeah, we've grown a lot. I mean, all over Los Angeles. Yeah. I mean, everywhere. Yeah. Mm, that's crazy. Wow. Um, what has going to college and graduating taught you now? Don't get in debt. Don't get in debt. <laughs> hey! And I, I, I feel so bad that's for That's a deep one. That is, isn't that, yeah. that is deep. I feel so bad. You know, honestly, I wouldn't be who I am today if I didn't venture off to college. Good. If I didn't go away, get out of my, my atmosphere in L.A. Mm-hmm. And, and do something completely different, to yeah. be independent, to be yes. you know, my own person, think on my, in the way I think, mm-hmm. the way Jerry thinks, not the way you think, not the way she, you know, right. the right. way I think. And yeah. we all have value we can bring to somebody else's life because we're all different. That's what mm-hmm. I like. You know, when you go to college, you're in there for the first month, first year. So many people from all different yes. walks of life come in, you know, yes. from Idaho, you know, from Oregon, from Washington, yep. you know. 
and hearing their perspectives on life and just talking to them in general and just interacting and, and realizing we all have obviously a commonality, but just yeah. going through the motions and experience of college, mm-hmm. really, I don't mind the debt at all. It's just a number yeah. to me. You know, a number. Yeah. The experience to me was much more rewarding yeah. than anything ever. Yeah. So for me, college was just an eye opener to the world. Okay. You know, it really was. Good. So I, I, anybody who has family or themselves who's thought about not even college, just venturing off, going to do anything. Yes. If you can live somewhere for three months, a year, a month, however long, go do it. I mean, why stay in one place for so long in life, mm-hmm. right? You, yeah, this, she knows this the world, thing that he knows. Yeah, yeah this world is, is small. Yeah, you know, and, and you only get life what maybe once, twice. I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody will say twice, three times. Yeah, I know. So. I, you know, it's funny, and then you bring up a good point there. I think it's uh, interesting that coming out of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Um, Doing other things, venturing out, and I, I always say that also in my practice. I'm a life coach, also certified life coach, and I always say that it's, it is interesting. You know, we live in these insular worlds, and a lot of times our home is the insular world. That's where everything begins and ends. You sleep there, you wake up, and you create your sanctuary, so to speak, in your home. And I always tell people that sometimes I can strangle you a little bit, and uh, with, uh, and especially when it comes to stuff. Because you, you're home, so you have your walls are covered, and your your closets are full, and your drawers can't close, and all this. Like, but you don't. But your whole world is that, and you don't like venture out to anything else or think of a different way of thinking. So, what you're suggesting is think a little differently, try something new, try something different, yeah, venture you, out. You'd be surprised at what you like. Exactly, you know? and how it'll change, how it'll affect change in your life. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's. I mean, I I'm all about affecting change. But I used to, like I said, on my show a couple weeks ago, I, I had a, I used to always have this phrase, I hate change. And my friend, like, opened a book and read me and was like, uh, James, everything you do is change. <laughs> you must like it. I was like, oh, my God. My girl, Tara. Shout out to Tara in Oakland. Um, I said, yeah, I guess I can't say that anymore because everything I've done is affected change in my life. So I just think people should invite change into their lives. Of course. Um, so a real estate writer, is that writing writing up contracts? Is that writing? Oh, so basically, What is yeah. that? Basically, well, I had worked in downtown LA, so I'll get, go backtrack a little okay, bit. Okay, yes. So I got this position 2013, fall 2013, October. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started writing for a, a website uh, okay. related to finance, and I would write, I was their in house, you know, real estate okay. guru type okay, of deal. So yeah. they would give me a lot more of the real estate articles to write about. Okay. I write, you know, obviously tips on how to, you know, organize your budget for after you graduate college or you know, how to save for, for Christmas or you know, stuff like that. But I would f- focus more on real estate articles. Go ahead. Let's stop right there. So you have tips to organize budget after college. What is one of the big tips you would give somebody? Ooh, save half. Okay. Yeah, because okay. you never know. It's yes. tough. Okay. Yeah, true. save as, or just as much as you can yeah. because you never know what life's going to throw at you and you just want to mm-hmm. be prepared. Okay. Like Especially she's this, like, yes. She's like, yes. Yeah, she That's knows, what yeah. I thought about this morning. Like, every time I get my checks, I wish I would save half of it and put wow. it away. But yeah, right now, not so. saying I always do it, right. but I always save as much as yes, I can because yeah. you just never know. And I would say get a, get a side hustle. Yeah, just always. Be real. That's right. Get a side hustle. That's you know, right. Do something that's gonna, yeah. that you, sh- you can always go back to to make some money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was a tutor in, in high school. Oh, okay. And okay. I've done that here and there. Okay. I just say, you know what? Next couple of months, I don't know what's going to happen. Let's let's go back to tutoring for a little while. Right. You know? Yeah, because, Lady, you have uh, the hair thing, right? I do hair. There yeah. you go. See? Yeah. You got to have hustles. You know, yeah. like, I'm, I'm a realtor. I write online. I picked up another job. Can't okay. really say too much okay. about it on the air. <laughs> okay. But it's, it's related. When you can, let us know. <laughs> I can tell my people. <laughs> but it's related to uh, basically uh, search engine optimization. Okay. So. Okay. I might do that. Okay. And then I, so I pretty much have three gigs going on right now. Most of my time is focused on real estate. Okay. Uh, from about nine to seven <laughs> every day. I tell people, I tell my clients, okay, call me before midnight after 7 a.m. Got it. Yes. All right. <laughs> yes. That's fine. If you want to text me, you want to call. I've had clients call me at 1130 oh, wow. p.m. in the evening. and they For want, what? They want to go over houses and, and oh, on a property that's available. Wow. I make myself available and open. Okay. You know, okay. I just show people I'm here to, to help and I'm here yeah. to hustle and work hard for you. Yeah. So. Wow. How long have you been with uh, Keller Williams? Since March 2000, oh no, May 2014. Okay. Okay. Over about a year, about a year and a half. Yeah, a year, almost a half. A year and a half. Um, 
take us briefly through the process of how you organize your time to sell a house. Ooh, that's a long process. Is there is there is there any kind of brief ways you can kind of some you know kind of so to actually a sell a house or go through the motions of getting a client to sell a house? Ooh, that's two different things there. I, just, I, just because, want, I know a lot of people are like, how do you how do you do that? How do you organize that okay, process? Okay. How do you kind of go through that? So basically, it starts out to say I'm helping somebody buy a house and start with that, yeah. right? Because that's what I focus on right okay. now. I focus with, on okay. helping people. Most of these are first-time home buyers okay. that I work with. Okay. Oh, so okay. I'm a newer agent, so you know I have to establish myself with people who are newer. Okay. Right? Okay. Because people who have bought before I probably have a realtor that they oh, work with. Oh, they go back to yeah. you, right? Yeah. So um, basically, first thing we want to do is get you pre-qualified. Okay. See how much you can afford, go through that motion. Got and then we start putting in, looking at homes and putting in offers on homes that they like. Got it. Once one finally pops... We have a home that you like. We got the offer accepted. You know, we decide, do we really, really, truly want this? Okay. You know, I, I always tell it to my clients, I'm not going to force you to buy anything. Okay. This is your decision to make. I'm here to present all the facts. Got it. And then take it from there. Then we, what we do after that is we open escrow. Through okay. that escrow period, we go through inspections, we go through appraisals, yeah. and they actually get qualified for the loan. Okay. Um, and that's a 30-day process. It can vary. Okay. I work with a lot of people. I do a lot of down payment assistance programs, Ooh, okay. which are backed by the state of California. Okay. Uh, so it can help people get into homes with little down, wow. essentially. Okay. So there are a lot of great programs out there that people can really Come use. Come people. Okay. So it's, it's really good to know that because I've actually helped people who thought they wouldn't be able to afford property yeah. who actually are – they have houses right now. Okay. So it's, it's a long process. Okay, but that's some, it gives it, some it idea, takes, though. Yeah, it, it, takes, some idea. it takes months. Now, to actually you know get – Buyer, yeah. or seller, or somebody. Yeah. Um, every day I have a calendar. Okay, good to know. Okay, buy a calendar. I, we I do love have them. a calendar. Let's I, organize I go just through. Love that. Yeah, and you do. I, you know, the first thing I, I try to do every morning is go to the gym. Okay, good. Work out. Okay. Like yesterday, I went 6 a.m. I was at the gym, worked out till 7. Where do you go? 24 hour fitness. Oh, I'm a plant fitness yeah. person yeah. over there on Manchester. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right there next to Vons. Yeah. I was there for a little while. I used to jog there, actually. Because oh, right. I'm not too far from that. I could jog. It's like a mile from my house. Okay, yeah. Um, so I, I try to work out, get those endorphins going, yes. motivate myself. Then I have to walk my dog, Jack. Oh, okay. If I don't walk Jack, he's on crack the rest of the day. <laughs> Jack on crack. Yeah, he's yes. on crack. Yes. And then I walk my other dog, Jill, after to walk Jack. Jack and Jill, your dogs. Yeah, I know. My oh, dad's my idea. Jeez. When we got, first got Jill, he said, I was like, what should we name Jill? I mean, what should we name our dog? It's going to be a female. What about Jill? We could name him Jack and Jill. Oh, I was God. like, Are you, I rolled my eyes. I said, you know what? That's actually kind of cute. cute. Yeah. That's kind of cute. That's funny. So. Do that, and then hopefully by 9 a.m. Okay. is when I want to get to do something with real estate related. Okay. Now, do phone. you work from home or do you work? In an I work from day? home primarily. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So why waste the time going and driving somewhere? Yeah, no, I'm learning. That's know? good. Yeah. So I work from home. I have my own, you know, desk and everything. I was ask you that. I, I'm, a, I'm a self-motivated person. Okay. I don't need anybody to tell me what. I, TV's off. Yeah. I might have like light music playing or something. Oh, okay. okay. I, might, I might actually have some Tony Robbins in the background okay. on my desktop, just just there for motivation to help yeah. me keep me motivated. Yeah. I'll get to calls. I'll get to emails. Whatever yeah. I have to do. Um, yeah. Between like nine to maybe noon yeah. or one, three, yeah. four hour, I try to do at least a t- solid two hours of cold calling. Yeah. And the other two hours are for like follow up emails, correspondence. Okay. Because people will email me and call me throughout the morning yeah. and. So I have to, you know, shift back to that, yeah. take care of this, send yeah. a document, respond to this, yeah. email. So within yeah. that four hours, I try to do two hours of solid cold calling and then two hours. So. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm fairly organized. No, you're, that, that's good. I mean, that's to what folks that you are organized. It doesn't happen actually. every single day. No, but of course not. But. The majority of the week, it does happen. Wow, so, that's good. That's yeah. really good. Wow. And we're going to talk some more to Jerry and Lady Dean when we get back. It's the Super Organized Universe, Super, Super Organized Universe Radio. Get out. <laughs> What's up, this is Warren G, you know what I'm saying? I'm here giving it up for Rad because they do a lot of good things for people. Before you drink, make sure that you got somebody that can drive your butt home so you won't crash or get pulled over and get a DUI. So go ahead and follow the route, and everything will be cool. And don't be no fools. Peace, baby, Warren G. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Rad, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. 
You might know me, I'm 50 Cent. You may follow my tweets, my Facebook friends. Odds are a few in six degrees separate us. We're that close. What's crazy is one in six don't know where their next meal is coming from. These are your co-workers, your neighbors, your friends. Hunger is too close for us to ignore. So visit feedinamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank to see how you can make a difference. From one close friend to another, let's do this. I'm 50 Cent, and together we are Feeding America. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hey, I'm James Lodge Jr., the Super Organizer. I host Super Organizer Universe Radio every Friday from 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Join me each week as I give you tips on how to organize your life, home life, work life, family, all needs organization, and I'm here to help. Every Friday from 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here on Adrenaline Radio, Super Organizer Universe Radio. Organizing shouldn't be sour. It should be sweet. Thanks for asking, but I'd rather not send you nude pictures. I'm camera shy. I already said no. Under my clothes, I'm a robot. My webcam is broken. I'm worried they'll get passed around school. I have a rash. I have nudophobia. I have lizard skin. I'm a vampire, so I don't show up in pictures anyways. Your badgering has really killed the mood. When someone is pressuring you to do something you don't want to, how many ways can you say no before they get the message? Let us know at that'snotcool.com. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome, we're back to Super Organizer Universe Radio. I am James Lodge, the Super Organizer, and we're here with Jerry Morales and Lady Harvey and Baby Cosette, who wants her attention also, apparently. <laughs> Luckily, she's cute. She's really cute. You guys can't see her, of course, because it's the radio, but just take my word for it. Um, take your word for it. Take my word for it. She's cute. <laughs> just worry about it. So, um, what I was going to continue with is, actually, I'm going to bring up something, and I want to see if you guys... Uh, Ever run across this yourselves? Okay. Um, there are questions I get asked all the time as an organizer, and so you can, and you can find this also on my blog, the superorganizeruniverse.com, dot Little plug, and uh, and there's a couple of questions I come up with, and I actually want some Europeans too. It's kind of funny. Whenever I tell people I'm a super organizer or an organ a professional organizer, I get several questions, and one of them is when you go to a friend's house and it's messy, do you have the fight to urge to clean it, organize it? I don't even ask. I just do it. I just do it. I just start picking up and and they'd be like, "What are you doing? I don't need you to clean my house." And I'm just like, "No, it's okay. It's okay. Like, I'm just a clean freak, OCD. I'm just going to move this right over here and just, you know, clean up a little bit." <laughs> just to like not make them feel bad. Yeah. But if if I notice that something looks out of place, then I'm ready to get it together. So for you, does it depend on the friend? Is it because they're close friends or is it anybody? N- it depends on the friend. It, de- yeah, it depends on the friend, friend, definitely. I wouldn't just go into anyone's house yeah. and just start cleaning. Right. That's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I clean your room too. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, because and about, about you, if you go to somebody's house, you're free you of your buddies or whatever. Do you like like, like oh my gosh, it's crazy? Not necessarily. I w- I'm trying to think off the top of my head whose house is like messy. Who name their names? Just kidding. You know, I don't I, like my friends. Are actually, I'm just just actually you made me realize my friends are pretty clean. I guess. Oh, see, there you go. So. I mean, they must have women. Nah, no, they. Oh, they. Well, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> it's half and half. 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 Oh, my half. oh my god! She's like that was offensive. That was offensive to women. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, my god. oh baby angel, what's going on there? Oh. She was fine a second ago. Yeah, she was. She got yeah. nervous on the radio. She got nervous, yeah. I guess. But I, I don't go to anybody's house and tell yeah. them what to do yeah. or how to clean something, yeah. you know? So. It's funny. And I'm the same way. Actually, I don't even – I go to people's houses. I'm off duty. <laughs> so when I go there, I'm like, I'm not really looking at your – I mean, I see it, obviously. I walk and I see it. But a lot of times, I mean, unless you're going to give me some cash, I don't worry <laughs> I don't worry about it. Yeah. I'm like, I find my spot in the house and I sit down. Um, I, I'm not there. I'm not there to judge and be judging yeah, and all exactly. this stuff. I'm just like, no, nah, I'm just, I'm just here. I'm here to just be your friend and hang over. Um, if they mention it, then that's one thing. But so you folks out there, I do turn it off. I won't come to your house and start going, okay, girl, this is what you should be doing. I don't do that. Um, I, I don't do that. Another thing I get asked is, do you have I ever refused to go into someone's home? Ooh. I'm like no, no, Mm-mm. not no. Yeah, I haven't either. I think that's the extreme. Of yeah, it. yeah, that's extreme. That's the yeah, most. <laughs> but I get asked this question. I'm like, no. I was like, no. I don't. I don't really. No, I don't. I don't. I'm a claustrophobic person in some situations. 
but it's different than like going to spice house going okay this is just too much i can't be here anymore like luckily i don't have that going on but i do get asked that and of course i get asked the course are you ocd and i'm not i just like to have have you ever right. been like really angry cleaning up like yes and there's nothing to be angry for, but as soon as you're done cleaning, then you're fine. Like your attitude. No, my no, my uh, my anger comes from a place. <laughs> I don't, I'm slow to anger. First of all, you know how I am. I'm very I'm very just calm and everything. When I when I do get angry, it's not fun. So get away from me. Um, but I do find the best time. I like to clean when I'm angry. Right, me I, too. I put on music and I'm just I go to town and it's gonna be the cleanest bathroom <laughs> or it, kitchen that you've ever seen be in your like life. Sparkling. Oh yeah. It's going to start singing to you. Like, I love cleaning, cleaning, but for some reason, when I start cleaning, I have an attitude until I'm done. Ooh. But I don't know where it comes from. But that's... That's why life coach comes up. So you have an attitude when you clean. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But you mean, like, you're just kind of, like, not in a great mood, so you start to clean, and then when you finish, you feel so much better. I feel better. better. It feels like my life... When my house is clean, I feel like my life's in order. I like that. I do, too. I, I think that happens like for that. everybody. Yeah. We've all had phases where our house is dirty and oh, clean, yeah. and yeah. you know. And then once you clean it up, it's like, oh wow. This so, are you living with your dad still? Yeah. And, your, and your brother? You guys yeah. are living together. So, how with three guys? You say your dad's a clean person. How are you and your brother? I mean, we're pretty messy sometimes. Put them on blast. That's right. <laughs> and we go through our phases, yeah. like everybody. You know, some days my room has a bunch of junk all yeah. over, and then other days it's clean. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we we clean all the time. Yeah. You know, we got two dogs, so I'm always vacuuming, get all that that's, hair that's out. What it is, that's I'm always what it sleeping. Is. I'm always, yes. you know, trying to give them baths. Actually, yes. uh, Jill, oh man, I tried to cut her a couple months ago, and oh man, she had patches and stuff. It wasn't oh. that bad. Oh, my, my dad was laughing. Oh, uh, take her to Pet Smart. <laughs> It was like several press smarts in the neighborhood. They're, saying. they're like, yeah. come on, stop being cheap. I'm like, I thought it would be practical to buy a blade for 100 bucks and just do it every, you know, a few months. I was like, actually, now I know why these people get paid. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't cut my own hair. <laughs> so I'm not cutting no dogs here. So I get myself pampered at the barber. I go to Getting Faded in Westchester. My there friends. you go, Getting Faded. Getting Faded. I love them. Um, so no, I get my hair did. So I don't, I don't do anybody's hair. <laughs> Sorry. Or my own. Um, this is so funny, actually. So for you, uh, Jerry, because you are young, you are in your early 20s. Um, well, now I'm in 26 now. So, so mid 20s. Yeah, well, I guess mid. It feels morning. it feels like the early 20s. Still. Yeah, like <laughs> honestly, I feel like you I'm guys right. don't see him, but you go on my page and look at him. He's like he's 12. Yeah, you do. Look, you like you just good. like you're gonna good, age really well. Good jeans. Yeah, good jeans. Good for acting. If I if I shave this, I'm gonna look like I'm 30. No. <laughs> um, yeah, good for acting. I know yeah, that's, that's yeah. how you could do that. Yeah, we could look young. Um, but being being youthful in the market of real estate, how has that been for you? How are people treating you in general? How's that kind of? Yeah, so I try to make myself appear as competent as possible. Okay. You know, I really present myself in a professional manner. Okay. I really do. And it, people turn their heads. So some people, obviously, it comes, oh, they look like a joke. Yeah. I've heard that before. You know? oh, okay. And it doesn't do- it doesn't phase me at all. Yeah. That's from your perspective. Yeah. You know, I know who I am and what I've done. Right. You know, once people read my newsletters or they hear me talk and they, they realize how knowledgeable I am of real estate, the market, mm-hmm. who I am as a person in general – they turn their heads and they say, "Wow, this this kid's you know okay, he, got he's something. got something going on." Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, um, obviously, I always make it known that I've been I've been featured in Huffington Post, <laughs> Business <laughs> Insider, hey, that's that's the place. Credit. Dot com that's because place. It, it shows credibility. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, people are trusting me mm-hmm. with a big life change, mm-hmm. so I want to make sure that they're comfortable, you know, utilizing my skill set to help them. Mm-hmm. That's good. You know, so I'm still growing. I'm still learning a lot yeah. every day, actually. But yeah. you know. Thus far, I feel like I've done well. You know what's funny? I um, because I'm kind of the person I help people with life changes also, but mine and a lot. Some of them I do. I do pack outs, pack ins, and so kind of related to. I've worked with some realtors, real estate people, where they'd hire me to come in and help the clients pack out, organize, ah, sort, sift. Okay. A lot of a lot of organizers do that. So, folks, if you guys are moving, because I've had people on my show who are who are moving experts in the field, um, you can hire an organizer. And realtors out there, hire organizers too. We're great. We will help you. Get clients out and in. There you We're go. really good about that. Um, so I know people with life change because we, and I don't know if you experience this too, it's a very personal thing. Yeah. When you're in their space, bless you. And it's also a personal thing when you're helping them find a space. I know for as an organizer, it's a personal thing when I'm touching their stuff and asking them to make a change of their stuff. And it could be, and I, I know for you, I don't, for me, some situations have been, you know, widowhood, retirement, kids are gone, or downsizing. 
So you have the same kind of stuff too? Yeah, I've seen people, and I, we go, I look at so many houses. I mean, yeah. just, there's so many examples. But yeah, I've definitely seen situations where, you know, people are downsizing or just divorce. Yeah. You know, that happens. Uh, and just, you know, you can tell you're in their space and not everybody really wants to make that change, yeah. but it's necessary. Yeah. You know, I just stay neutral and then just do my best to be yeah. po- positive in that time because in their heads, I know what they're going through is, is really just big and, and drastic yeah. for them. And it's, it's a tough time. You know? What are some of your approaches with clients who are going through a tough time? You know, I just try to remain positive and professional, but I don't, I don't be too play. I'm not too playful, I guess you would say. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, re- I really like to befriend my clients. Mm-hmm. You know, I like to show them Jerry. Mm-hmm. You know, I like to show them the personal side of me and mm-hmm. mix with the professional because that's really who I am. Yeah, me too. I'm fun, but I'm professional at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, I really just try to put them at ease and know that, hey, I, I'm very competent. I'm going to take yeah. care of you. But at the same time, when you're with me, you're not going to have more stress in your life. Right. I'm, I'm here to get rid of that stress for you. Right. I'm here to help you move on forward. And I'll give suggestions all the time. Yeah. I mean, I can't think of any on top of my head. But, right. you know, like, okay, right now, I have a client who just she just needed a place. Okay. She just needed a place <laughs> as soon as possible. Bless you. And, you know, yeah. I mean, she, she was just losing it because she thought yeah. she wasn't going to find a place. But yeah. the more she just hung out with me, interacted with me, and, and just realized how hard I was hustling for her. Yeah. You know, she felt comfortable moving forward with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And just meeting meet the need of the client is, is what, you know, to me is what you need to do. You know, you need to get to the truth. Mm-hmm. Ask the right questions. Find out what what's their desire, what's their motivation for whatever they're going to do. Maybe it's a life change that they didn't see coming. Mm-hmm. But from their perspective, how can I make that the best life change? You're saying everything that relates into us organizers. You're saying everything you're saying is the same I should thing. Be an organizer, then, huh? I mean, it's, seriously, it's like everything you're saying is completely <laughs> is that easy, right? Yeah, it's completely. Get, a, get another hustle. There you go. A, why not? You're in LA. Why not? The hyphen it. Um, but no, we all that's, we think of the same things. We're there because I always say I don't work for you; I work with you. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, you're paying me. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I, but I work. But I mean, let's be real; you're paying me, and you're going to pay me, of course. Uh, we got contracts, but no, but there, but people, I work with you. Like you said, I try to show them a little bit of James. I try to get in there, and like I said, make the best, make the best of their situation. Exactly, and that's all you can do. You know, use what life is throwing at you and make the mm-hmm. best situation you can out of it. Mm-hmm. You can always wish and promise that yeah. I hit, the, I could hit the lotto tomorrow. And, right. You know, do this and that, but where are you at right now, mm-hmm. and how can you make that better? And you, how can you continuously improve on that? Stop right there. That's exactly, and, that's, and that can be used in time management. That can be used in organization. That can be used in disorganization. That right there is is, is key thing. How where are you at now? And how can you make it better? Exactly. It's like where are you right now? Like, is this working for you? Yeah. And, and it, it can yeah. always be better. It can always be worse. Right, no, it right. can always be better. It can always be worse. I was going. It always be better. I, I stick with that. Way. Yeah, always be well, better. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I go with no, both I know, because it's you know, when you're in a profession like this, you, you always think about, oh, I could have done so yeah. much better. But I look at them saying, I could have done so much worse. Yeah. I could have not closed any right. deals. Right. I could have. Right. I could be at zero right now. Right. There are people who have oh, not, really? you know, sold anything in over a year. Ooh, wow. So I'm fortunate nice. enough to yeah. have seen results from the yeah. hustle. Yeah. You know, let's let's get a little ghetto in here. Let's, let's get the hustle, you know? <laughs> let's get let's get the hustle on. No. Yeah. But seriously, you know, so it's good to, to really be practical about where you're at in life and, yeah. and to really appreciate everything that you do have and yeah. just always find a way to motivate yourself and to push forward and organization I would say is, is really big and key in putting your life, giving it value. Because if you're not or- somewhat organized, and everybody's organized in their own right, way, shape, right, or form, you don't right. have to have a calendar. You don't have no, to. No. But in your head, you have you know you you go to you go to work. Mm-hmm. That's organized. You know yeah. you pay your bills. That's organized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know you yeah. get food. You you yeah. go do whatever you have to do. That's that's being organized. I felt like the woman this morning after I paid all my bills. There, see? I saw that earlier. Yeah. I felt like I woke up like Superwoman. Was that great? Yeah. When it, you accomplish it, stuff, it's yeah, great. It feels awesome, especially when you're in a position where sometimes you know there are those months where you where you may feel like i don't know where it's gonna come from yeah Mm -hmm. you know and when it finally gets done at the end like maybe about two months ago i wasn't sure you know if how i was gonna get everything paid and then in the end result everything was taken care of that it just feels awesome you know i love that and you did it right and i did it on my own yes 
And that's the best I feeling. I love that. I love that. That's right, girl. <laughs> so I have two questions that I like to ask because I mean, because time is just, I tell you, it's almost, like, almost over already. It goes, by so, it goes by so fast. Oh, man. I need like a five-hour show. I know. That's crazy talk. I can talk forever. But you, have to, you just have to come back to talk. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so these are two questions I ask everyone who comes into my program. Okay, okay. And I didn't prompt him or anything, because so I always <laughs> ask him right at the, at the time of it. Like Dean's already did before, so she'll do it again. One. Oh, said you have a yes. Should I ask you? Yeah, let him answer. Wait. So, what is one word that you think we should eliminate from our vocabulary? I don't know. That's a tough one. I know because I'm a writer. You can't eliminate words. You can't. It's, every word has do, meaning. Do, 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 do. Uh, <laughs> a word that we can eliminate from our vocabulary, like Oxford Dictionary. That's what I'm going straight for. Like or slang as well. Can we include slang? I, I don't give. I don't give prompts answers. That's right. what I, I ask you the question. Whatever, whatever is considered a word, and you think we should not be saying it and using it in our vocabulary. I'm trying to think of like a ghetto word I hate. Twerking. Twerking. <laughs> twerking. Adds no value to my life. Twerking adds no value to That's my life. That's funny. That's good. I like that. That's good. I like that. It's just that ratchet <laughs> stuff, man. Come on. Do you agree? Okay. Show some, some decency. People. At least he agrees. I like that. Yeah. Okay. And then here's the, I like that. Here's the other word. I, um, what is one word you think we should add into our vocabulary? So I have to make up a word. No, 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 no. I know. I know. I know. Like no, people, no, someone asked me before too. Like, so I make it. Well, I make up words all the time, like unifocal. Something that but, isn't yeah. really like used a lot, but we should. Or you more. think, you know, yeah, or you, or just the words you think that are empowering that we should use. I mean, just I mean anything. I mean, just whatever word you think we should put back in vocabulary, or fun word, uh, or just fun just word. I'm just, thinking. Let's see here. I, I want something. Memorable. Yeah, so memorable. memorable. <laughs> That's why I don't tell. Twer- I asked. I, set, I set it up with twerking. That was a good one. That's a good I, one. I gotta have another good one. So uh, let's, let's do. Um, you know, you know, a word I like is a uh, steadfast. Oh, you know, because re- um, it's just it's just a good word to 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 remain on the path. You know, to go forward like and that's and good. and to to try your hardest. You know, it's just I, I, that's a good word. Steadfast. I feel like I'm so steadfast. I feel like I'm steadfast. Remain steadfast, everyone. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. See, you did it. You pulled it out. Right. Yeah, you pulled it out. That's good. I that's like that. That's a word for me today. That's right. Yeah, steadfast. Yeah. I'm steadfast. Wow, you guys. That's good. Yes, I, th- I think today, folks, like I always try to do is talk to people from all walks of life because organization and time management and just life itself affects everyone. And I like to show people um, that maybe hopefully you picked up some things for yourself by listening to Jerry and Ladine and myself today. Um I just, I just think, I just think, organization, time management, working hard, being steadfast, there you go. are just great things in life to make your life better. I want everyone to be in positions where they're happy, and at least doing what they want to be doing, or at least get on their way there. You know, um, and I'll and I'll ask you for you if you could, because I guess briefly, if you could just think of one thing you'd really like to have happen for you, what could it be? Say it out loud. What could it be? Uh-huh. To actually see real progress in an acting career one Very day. Very good. Honestly. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm saying, Ladine, you're too. Um, Can be anything. In, in all honesty, yeah. I, I want to get my finances in order. Okay. Once your finances are in order, you feel at peace. Yeah. You know? Very true. For me. Yeah. Very true. I, I agree. So now, Jerry, where can the folks find you on the interwebs? So you can find me at <laughs> Facebook.com. Uh, backslash J E R R Y no J E R R M O R A L E S Jared Morales. Uh, yes. Twi- uh, Twitter, I believe it's the same Jared Morales without the Y. Okay. And then on Instagram, Jared Curl J E R R C U R L Jared Curl. Okay. Um, yeah. So and you're at Keller Williams Realty in from Marina through the Marina Del Rey office. Yes. Jerry at SouthBayHousing.com. There you go. Lady, where can they find you? You can find me on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Lady Harvey. That's with an L-A-D-I-N-E, Harvey. That's right. And, of course, I am your host, James Lodging. Thank you guys for being on today. Appreciate it. Uh, you're so again. welcome. Thank you, guys again. Thank you, you, James. You're welcome. And you can find me on all the interwebs. On Twitter, I'm at Black Hope L-A, B-L-A-K-H-O-P-L-A, and The Super O. On Facebook, I am... Uh, forward slash the super organizer and also you can follow my immediate exploits on James Lott Jr. I have a blog 
the superorganizeruniverse.com, and of course, the granddaddy of them all, my website, the superorganizer.com. Thank you for listening to us this week. Have a great Labor Day weekend, and I'll see you, well, see you guys in quotes next Friday when we have another <laughs> Super Organized Universe radio. 